Hi, I'm Dr. Dirk Rodriguez, and I really want to thank you for coming to see me. I appreciate you finding me or having your friends come see me. But as you probably already know, I am a weight loss surgeon. I'm a bariatric surgeon. What I do is I use minimally invasive laparoscopic and robot surgery to help people become healthy and, of course, to lose weight. What I do as a surgeon is I help people become healthier. I help them improve their health and lose medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, acid reflux, joint pain, high cholesterol, and of course, through the surgery, using good nutrition and exercise, people lose weight. And they lose a lot of weight, not just a little bit of weight. So what we're gonna be discussing today and talking about is different ways to help people lose weight with surgery, in addition to becoming healthy people, because that's the most important thing. The main focus here is we're going to treat a real medical condition called morbid obesity. If you don't know that, morbid obesity is a true medical condition just like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And just the same way as people go to the doctor to ask for help with those medical conditions, that's what you are. You're a patient asking a doctor for help with a real medical condition. Trying to treat obesity with diets and diet pills and exercise videos is like me trying to treat a heart attack with voodoo. If you came into the emergency room with a heart attack and instead of taking you to the operating room, I show up with statutes, candles, and chicken bones and I start howling to the moon, it'll be very entertaining but won't do a darn thing for the heart attack. Same thing with obesity. What we're going to do is we're going to change the inner workings of your body so that you can become a healthier person. We're going to make your body more efficient because that's the problem with obesity. Obesity comes about because you have a thousand hormones and chemicals inside your body that are not allowing your body to work efficiently for you. So they're really toxic to your body. What surgery does and what I do with surgery is figuratively I reach inside your body to change the inner workings of your body to drop those toxic hormones and chemicals and raise positive hormones and chemicals which in essence what they're going to do is they're going to accelerate your metabolism they're going to help good nutrition and exercise be more effective for you. The neat thing about surgery is that you're gonna do the things that make you and keep you healthy, and you're gonna become a healthy person. Oh yeah, and you get to lose a ton of weight later on. But what's really important for me is the focus of making you a healthy person, because obesity is a real medical condition, okay? Losing weight is important to you, and I understand that, but this is going to be a secondary side effect. We're going to celebrate your weight loss, but what your losing weight is going to be, it's going to be a verification, it's going to be a confirmation that you're doing the things so that you can be a healthy person. So now the important thing is to discuss the different type of surgeries that I perform to help people lose weight. As we know, one of the very popular weight loss methods or weight loss surgeries out there is called the lap band or the adjustable gastric band. The lap band is, was a really cool idea that came up about 10 or 12 years ago. Very, very popular, lots of advertising. As we now know, they were talking about the lap band was going to cure global warming. It was going to take the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. It was going to take the Rangers to the World Series. That really didn't come about. But it was an okay idea that got a lot of advertising. The purpose of the lap band is to make you full quickly when you eat. That's the only purpose the lap band does. Any other type of miraculous characteristics they tried to assign to the band just didn't turn out to be true. It really doesn't do any of the other stuff and it definitely does not create the hormone changes that I mentioned earlier in this video. The purpose of the lap band is to make you full quickly when you eat. The hope was that by reducing how much you could eat and hopefully changing what you eat as well as adding on exercise was going to create great weight loss. Early studies indicated that the band could help people lose about 50% of their excess body weight. So that means if you were carrying an extra 100 pounds, at the end of two years you could lose 50% of that or so be it 50 pounds. The problem is we now have much better research and what we have found out is that the band has an 80% failure rate. That means 80% of people who have the band are not going to lose the weight that they need to lose. The other problem that our research has shown is that it has a 20 to 30% complication rate, meaning that the band, anything related to the band, 
uh, would need a second or third surgery. So imagine that. It's kind of tough for me to recommend to you that you have a procedure that's going to have an 80% failure rate and on top of that you have a 20 or 30 percent chance of needing a second or third surgery to take care of anything that could go wrong with the band. What could go wrong with the band you ask? Well the band is a device that I put inside your body and it can move up and down in your stomach even though I stitch it into place. Any part of the band could twist or break and the band also has a plastic access port through where we put saline, inject saline into the band, and that can flip upside down, so now I can't put a needle inside of it. So if that happens, I can't fill or unfill the band. That's why I really don't recommend the band very much. Some people like the band because they say, oh, it's reversible, you can take it apart, but the problem that I have with that is if it's reversible, you go back to being what you were before, which is morbidly obese. Why would you pay money to go through a major surgery for a year or two or three to end up back at point A where you were before. That's why I'm not that much of a fan of the lap band. Another operation that surely you've heard about or I'd like to talk to you about is called the vertical sleeve gastrectomy. A lot of people shorten that and they call it the sleeve. The neat thing about the sleeve is that it's a great operation of which we have lots of information. A lot of people think it's experimental. I'm here to tell you it's not experimental. We have over 10 years of experience with this operation and it works wonderfully. What we do with the sleeve is we permanently remove the big floppy portion of your stomach that expands to accept food. And so we create your stomach into a long skinny sleeve that's about that big around. So how much food can you put in there? Not much, right? So it makes you full quickly when you eat. It's about that big around and that long. By dividing your stomach, it takes away your appetite, your hunger, and your cravings. So that monster you get in there that wants to eat a hole into your spine, that's out the door. That disappears. And it sets off those hormone changes where we're dropping the toxic hormones and chemicals that are not allowing your body to work efficiently for you, and we're raising positive hormones and chemicals, as I said before, to accelerate your metabolism. So of course, you're going to get full quickly. You're not going to be hungry. You're going to be eating differently you're going to be exercising, you become a healthy person, oh yeah, and you get to lose a ton of weight too. The sleeve is a great operation and the way we perform this through great technology is we do this laparoscopically, which means tiny little incisions on your tummy. The biggest incision is probably about that long if you choose the distance between your first and second knuckle, very small. With the sleeve it's about four or five very tiny ones so I don't mess up the bikini line too bad. The neat thing about the surgery as well too is we do it under general anesthetic. You're asleep for the whole operation, I get to stay awake for the whole thing, which they tell me is a good thing. Um, and it takes about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes all said and done. Depending on where we do the operation, you'll either be going home the same day or staying overnight. A lot of people are surprised by that, but our technology has changed so much over the last 20 years we can do a major operation where we are removing somewhere between 70 to 75 percent of your stomach and you can go home the same day. And yes, it's safe and yes, our science has proven it's safe for us to be able to do that. One of the things that you can expect with the sleeve is because I'm creating a new stomach for you, you'll have to keep the sleeve as a low pressure system. That means that you're going to be on liquids for at least three weeks after the surgery. You're going to be drinking liquids to stay hydrated, not just water alone, things that have electrolytes in them like Gatorade G2, Powerade Zero, sugar-free crystal light, and you're going to be drinking protein drinks as well to make sure you stay nourished. That's the important thing. You'll be on those for three weeks. Within three weeks, your stomach is going to be completely healed and you'll be able to transition over to food and all of that is explained in my nutrition program that I will give you when you first come to see me. Once you transition over to food, you can imagine how big are your portions going to be. They're going to be about that big. And if this is the fuel tank that has to run the entire engine of your body 24 hours a day, how many times do you have to fill that fuel tank? Lots of times. My most successful patients eat six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. Very small portions of food. As I tell all my patients, a quarter of a cup measuring cup is going to look like a Thanksgiving dinner to you. So that means you're going to become a really cheap date. 
One of the neat things that I can offer you with weight loss surgery, as well as the sleeve or the bypass, is I am also a laparoscopic, which a lot of people call minimally invasive. That means the tiny little incisions, like I told you before, some of the incisions are that big, about that distance. And I'm also a robot surgeon. Not that I'm a robot, but I use a robot to help me perform the surgery. So a lot of times I compare this to me kind of throwing a little transformer robot inside your body. But the neat thing about it is that there are these tiny little robot hands that I am controlling. I'm sitting at a console, the robot hands are inside your body, I am controlling the robot to perform the surgery. I find the robot to be really helpful, particularly when I'm doing a revision or a redo surgery, or I'm trying to correct a surgery, a weight loss surgery that someone has done previously. The robot makes me really precise and accurate. I think it's wonderful technology. As a guy, I'll tell you it's really cool. But I use this a lot to help people when they've had trouble with prior weight loss surgeries, but I also do it for first time surgeries and for my particularly very heavy patients who are over 500 pounds, the robot takes the stress off of me and allows me to do the surgery a lot more quickly on someone. With all of my patients, after a sleeve or any of the other surgeries that I'm talking to you about, once you've healed, once your stomach is healed from the surgery, about two to three weeks after surgery, you're gonna be eating very small portions of food. That's about how big around your stomach is. All of my patients are given information in my nutrition program and they are expected to follow a high protein, low carbohydrate type of nutrition program. My nutrition program explains very clearly what those foods are. High protein, low carb is really simple. It's like a super Atkins diet. High protein is things like different types of meats, chicken, beef, seafood, crab, tilapia, shrimp, lobster, different types of cheeses cottage cheese, yogurts, different types of nuts, different types of beans. It's stuff that people can eat every day. Clearly one of the things that's important after obesity surgery, people must understand that junk food goes away, vending machine food goes away, fast food restaurants go away. So if there are those of you out there who are thinking that cookie dough and tortilla chips and Dr. Peppers are part of a healthy nutrition program, that's got to go away, otherwise this doesn't work for you. Surgery is going to help you determine what weight you get to and how healthy you become. But please understand, the purpose of surgery is to make good nutrition and exercise more effective for you. The recipe is surgery, nutrition, and exercise. If you leave any one of these three things out, this does not work for you. And I know there's a lot of people out there who go, yeah, Dr. Dirk, I want to lose weight, this is great. And in the background, the chatter that I'm hearing is, oh yeah, I don't want to do that other stuff, just give me the surgery. If you don't make that transition here and here in your heart, this is not going to work for you. So that's very important for me that you understand. A lot of people ask me what they can expect after the sleeve. Our science has shown that on average, people can lose 65% of their excess body weight in one year after the surgery. What that means is, if you're carrying an extra 100 pounds at the end of one year, we would expect that you would have lost 65 pounds, which I think is really neat. What would your life be like if you were to lose 65 pounds in a year? Now, that's just the average. That doesn't mean that that happens to everybody. If you come out of this surgery like you've come out of a tent revival ready to change the world, you could lose all that weight, but you're the person who's going to make that happen. A lot of my patients will ask me what type of complications or what could go wrong related to the sleeve. The good news for you is the sleeve is a very safe operation. The likelihood of something going wrong is less than 1%. Again, that's based on a person's weight and the medical conditions that they come to surgery with. The more medical conditions you have, like diabetes or heart disease, the heavier you are, the older you are, the higher the chance of complications or things going wrong. As a doctor and as a surgeon, my job is to reduce that and to be honest with you and to tell you if we can do the surgery. And I will do that during your visit with me. But the sleeve is safe. The complications that can come about with the sleeve are number one, bleeding. Thankfully again, that's not very common. And I do a lot of tricks during surgery to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Another complication that can happen is a leak. That's where fluid from the inside of your stomach leaks out of your stomach inside your belly. And again, that happens very rarely. If these things do happen, I would have to take you back to the operating room to help you with that. But again, less than 1% chance of that happening. 
Another problem that can come about is blood clots. And the blood clots we're talking about are blood clots that can form in the veins of your legs that would go up to your heart and lungs and cause a major problem. And yes, they could potentially kill you. What we do to take care of that is very likely I'll be sending you home with some shots that you or your spouse or a nurse can give you once a day as a blood thinner to avoid blood clots in the veins of your legs going up to your heart and lungs. It's a once a day shot. Most of my patients take it for about one to two weeks and then you're done with that. But the one thing that avoids that from happening is making sure you stay hydrated after the surgery and you're up and about moving around. Another operation that is very helpful for folks is called the gastric bypass. Yes, I know, I understand, a lot of people have heard a lot of bad things about the gastric bypass, that it's responsible for global warming and all the ills of the world, but I'm here to tell you that's not true. The gastric bypass is a wonderful operation that has helped thousands about thousands of people. The gastric bypass is a different operation, very different from the band, very different from the sleeve, works differently, and has different results. What I do with the gastric bypass is we divide the stomach in two. We leave the top portion of the stomach attached to your food pipe and we completely bypass your lower stomach. Your lower stomach never ever sees food ever again. Clearly food has to have somewhere to go so I bring up some intestine and hook that up to the top portion of your stomach and we completely bypass the lower portion of your stomach. By bypassing the lower portion of your stomach that's what creates even more powerful hormone changes so that it accelerates your metabolism. Where I find the bypass to be really helpful is folks who are older, heavier, and who have insulin-dependent diabetes. That's where it really works. I have had some of my patients leave the hospital without their diabetes. They'll leave the hospital and they'll never take a diabetes medicine ever again. That's why it's so powerful. The results that we can expect with the gastric bypass is on average people can lose 70 to 75 percent of their excess weight in one year. So again, using modern math, if you're carrying an extra 100 pounds, imagine losing 70 to 75 pounds in your first year after surgery. That would be wonderful. Even more importantly, imagine your diabetes disappearing immediately. And with like some of my other operations like the sleeve, imagine your high cholesterol going away, your high blood pressure going away, your sleep apnea going away, your joint pain getting better. All of this again is getting back to making you a healthy person. With the gastric bypass, the surgery can take anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours, depending on prior surgeries and your health conditions. Again, as I've said, you're gonna be asleep for the entire operation, I get to stay awake for the whole thing. With the gastric bypass, again, our technology nowadays would allow you to either go home the same day or possibly be home the next morning. Again, it's very safe to do that. You will be following the diet and nutritional modifications that I will have given you in my nutrition program, and all of you will get that with the first visit to me. A lot of patients ask me questions about nutritional deficiencies or problems related to the gastric bypass. I'm here to tell you that the operation alone does not create problems. 99.9% .9 of the time when I've had a patient come in to see me and they've had a gastric bypass by someone else, if they have nutritional deficiencies, it's because they haven't followed the advice that they were given regarding staying healthy. That doesn't mean that they have to eat grass and cardboard. That isn't it at all. But a lot of times people go back to their old bad habits, junk food, vending machine food, fast food restaurants. That doesn't work after weight loss surgery. The other thing that they'll do is they won't take their vitamins or they're taking the wrong types of vitamins or they won't take other nutritional supplements. In my nutrition program that all of my patients receive, you get all the information that you need to be healthy after the surgery. Something else that people talk about is they talk about the stomach stretching or the stomach growing back. I'm here to tell you, I've been doing this for over 25 years. There is no stomach stretching. There is no stomach growing back. I promise you that's not the case. What does stretch is people's brains. They go back to their old bad habits. And that is the number one reason why weight loss surgeries fail. Another operation that a lot of people have researched and know about is called the duodenal switch. The duodenal switch is a very different operation, different from the band, the sleeve, and the bypass. It's constructed differently and it works differently. The neat thing about the duodenal switch is it combines the sleeve, the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, with a super bypass. 
what we're doing is re we're reducing the size of your stomach and we're putting your stomach really close to your large intestine. So we're bypassing a lot of your intestine. The duodenal switch is considered a malabsorptive operation. We are actively interfering with your body's ability to absorb food. And what that does is it sets off more powerful hormone changes and really accelerates your metabolism. I like to reserve the duodenal switch for people who have to lose a bunch of weight by yesterday. These are good for folks who are five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds who have significant medical conditions and they need to lose their weight quickly. It is a major operation. It is not a small procedure. And the thing about the duodenal switch is that you must make a religious conversion after the surgery and follow nutritional guidelines and take nutritional supplements very much religiously. The duodenal switch does not fool around. You play by the rules and if you don't, within 30 to 90 days, the operation really kicks you in the bottom. It will let you know you're not following the rules. A lot of people come in asking for the duodenal switch because on the internet they have heard that they can eat anything they want and they continue losing weight. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. You've got to follow the rules. Like you've heard me mention for the band, the sleeve, and the bypass, with my nutrition program we'll give you the information you need so that you can become healthy. You need to eat healthy and you need to take your nutritional supplements. With the duodenal switch, you have to work harder and you have to take more additional supplements like vitamins A, D, E, and K. And you're going to have to take additional calcium and magnesium because the operation does interfere with the absorption of these very important nutritional supplements and, and these elements. So while the duodenal switch is a good operation, I do not recommend it for everyone and I do ask them to choose carefully before they consider taking this operation on. Why? I understand. We're busy in our lives, we're working, we have children, there's life emergencies, and a lot of these things can derail you. The duodenal switch doesn't care what those things are. You play by the rules or it gives you a really hard time. I would like to talk to you about something that's very important to me that's going to help you become healthy after whatever weight loss surgery you choose to have with me. As you've heard me say, the surgeries make good nutrition and exercise be more effective for you. That's really important and you're going to receive that in my nutrition manual. All of my patients get the Dr. Dirk nutrition manual that I subsequently call the Gospel According to Dr. Dirk. But what's really important is that it simplifies nutrition and exercise. In the United States, a lot of experts out there have made nutrition very complicated. And I'm here to tell you, it's not complicated. It's very easy. The way we were designed, if we practice good nutrition, we can become healthy. When you practice good nutrition after surgery, you're going to become a healthy person. You get to lose all those medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux, sleep apnea. Oh yeah, and you get to lose a ton of weight as well too. Good nutrition does not mean grass and cardboard. You do not have to travel to some strange tropical rainforest to find some monkey who poops a berry out of his butt to lose weight. You don't have to do that. But granted, it's food from your grocery store. You need to understand, fast food goes away, junk food goes away, vending machine goes away. If you think eating cookie dough or chips or potato chips or ice cream by the gallon is part of a healthy nutrition program, we're not going to get along. But you do get to enjoy food. My nutrition program talks about high protein, low carb. High protein is clearly explained in the nutrition program. It's things like meat, chicken, beef, roast beef, pork, ham, different types of seafood, fish, catfish, tilapia, shrimp, crab, lobster, different types of cheeses, cottage cheese, yogurt, different types of beans and legumes, different types of nuts, things that most of us carnivores enjoy anyway and that are easily available to you at your grocery store. So you don't have to be making strange trips to different places. You don't have to find a specialty store or a specialty website. It's right there probably a couple of blocks down the street from your house. That's very important. All of my patients who are successful with surgery eat very small portions every day. A quarter of a cup is going to look like a Thanksgiving dinner. A lot of my patients tell me that two, three, four bites of food is all they need to eat to get full and then they're done. 
my patients eat six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. Isn't that kind of strange? Your weight loss surgeon is telling you that you're going to eat all day long. Your full-time job is going to be eat. And some people say, hey, that's really cool. Everybody else will complain about it, but you get to say, yeah, sorry about your luck. You know, I get to eat. Another thing that's very important, and our science has shown this, is exercise. Remember I told you it's surgery, nutrition, and exercise. And yes, I'm sorry, you were hoping the weight loss surgery was going to do everything. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. You're going to have to do daily aerobic exercise. You're going to start slow. Standard rule of thumb applies. Your standard doctor cliche is out there. If it hurts, don't do it. I don't want you to hurt yourself when you're doing your exercise. Start slow and build your way on up. What I tell all of my patients is that eventually they're going to get to a point where they're doing aerobic or cardio exercise every day and slowly but surely they're going to work themselves on up to 60 continuous minutes a day. I'm okay if you start slow. I'm okay if you break it up, if you do some in the morning and you do some in the afternoon. But eventually, four, five, six, seven, eight months down the road, you're going to get yourself to a point where you're doing 60 continuous minutes of aerobic or cardio exercise. A lot of people ask me about weight and resistance training and yoga and Pilates, and I go, yeah, that's okay, that's extra, that's gravy. You can do that to stay strong, to keep your muscles and your bones strong. And I like that because it forces your body to absorb the food and the nutrition that you're taking in. But first and foremost, when we talk about exercise, it's going to be cardio. It's going to be aerobic exercise, walking, treadmill, elliptical, stair climber, exercise bike, Zumba, Wii Fit, whatever you want. What you'll read in my nutrition program regarding exercise is I want you to get to a point where you're elevating your heart rate to higher than 100 beats per minute continuously for 60 minutes. What's important and what you will see in the nutrition program as well too is vitamins and supplements. I try to keep things really simple. What I tell folks is after any surgery that I perform for you, you're going to be taking a good multivitamin. What's important and what you will read in the nutrition program is I don't want you taking hard tablet multivitamins. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's that thing, it's about that big, it looks like a horse suppository tablet and looks like it's encased in concrete. That's not for you. If your doctor has prescribed for you a medicine that comes in a tablet, that's okay. And I know a lot of people have heard that after surgery you're supposed to crush your medicine. Absolutely not. It tastes awful and you don't have to do that. What's very important regarding multivitamins is that you take a good multivitamin that's in a capsule, a gel cap, a chewable, or a liquid. As long as you are getting those, you will be fine and you'll be healthy. I always encourage folks to take an extra B vitamin, whether it's B12 or B complex vitamins. That's important as well too. That's very important for women. I encourage my guys to take it as well, but it's very important for women. Based on your health and your medical conditions, you may need to take extra iron. You may even need to take extra calcium as well too, but that's something that we'll discuss in the office and we'll go over carefully. A lot of patients come to see me asking for help with past weight loss surgeries. They've had weight loss surgery with another doctor, maybe they've even had it with me, and their weight loss surgery isn't working for them or they're having problems related to weight loss surgery. The most common thing I see is weight regain after weight loss surgery. And again, that may be based on changes in nutrition or diet, uh, not exercising enough, there's a small possibility that there could be a problem with the surgery, and my job is to help you figure that out. If I am doing a revision surgery, please expect to have some tests done, either x-rays or endoscopies where I place a lighted flexible telescope inside your body, maybe even getting CAT scans, to find out what's going on or what needs to be fixed if there is something to be fixed. As an obesity surgeon, I do a lot of revision surgery. I have changed bands to sleeves and bypasses. I've had to change bypasses to sleeves and sleeves to bypasses. But that's something that's very individualized for each patient. It requires more work. It requires a lot more conversation so you can understand what we're going to be doing to help you out. But again, the focus is to help you become a healthy person. A lot of my patients come and ask me about the cost related to surgery, and I understand that. You're going to become a healthy person, you're going to lose weight, but the other thing that's important is because you become healthier, you're taking less medicine, 
which means you're paying less or you're not paying the copays related to your prescription medications. If you're not taking as many medicines, you're not seeing your primary care doctor or family doctor as frequently. So you're not paying those copays. So overall, your health improves. Our science has shown that weight loss surgery pays for itself within about two to two and a half years after the surgery. So imagine that, you become a cheap date because you're not eating as much. Your health is improved because you're not taking your medicines or don't need to take your medications. You're not seeing your doctor as often or as frequently. You're enjoying life in a very different way. Your life isn't medicine and doctor's visits. Your life is going out to the movies, traveling, enjoying time with your significant other, enjoying time with your children, watching your children grow up, and pretty much living the life that you want to in control of your health and your well-being. A lot of folks ask me about how much time off work they're gonna need after obesity surgery. On average, I tell people to take about a week off of work. I'm here to tell you I've got some patients who have been back to work within three to four days after surgery. I've even had patients travel to see me from out of state or long distances from within Texas and they're back to work by Monday or Tuesday. However, on average, I tell folks, take about seven days off of work. That doesn't mean you're laid up in bed. It doesn't mean you feel miserable. During that seven day period of time, you're gonna be looking at a nutrition program, an exercise program, and you're gonna concentrate on how to make that fit into your busy work environment. A lot of patients ask me about loose skin. And what I've got to tell them is that varies with every single patient. Every person is different and every individual is different. What I tell folks is that if you have 100 extra pounds to lose, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna have some loose skin. Younger patients, patients with less weight to lose, tend not to have a problem with loose skin. But again, if you have more than 100 pounds to lose, there's a pretty good chance that the next professional relationship you're gonna develop is with a plastic surgeon. A lot of people ask about exercises and creams and lotions, and I'm here to tell you that having done this for over 20 years, I really haven't seen any of that stuff to work. But again, it depends on you and your health. I wanna thank you for coming to see me. Please understand that you're amongst friends here. We're a resource for you. We're here to help you. But I am here to help you, not just to operate on you, but I want you to become a healthy person. Oh yeah, and I want you to lose a ton of weight too.